and I don't see myself as a black person. I see myself as a, I'm of a course. husband first. Yeah. Then I'm a father and uh, then I'm a business owner. Um, and I'm a member, member of the black community as well, but mm. it's not, it's, uh, my identity is not my skin color. And it seems well, it's like sin, which is being out of alignment with God. Yeah. Right. And that, that old, that saying that I've heard since I was a little is, you know, sin will always take you farther than you want to go, make you pay more than you want to pay and make you stay longer than you want to stay. Welcome to Radical Radio with Robbie Dawkins. Robbie is a renowned speaker and equipper in over 70 countries, as well as author of international best-selling book, Do What Jesus Did. Here's your host, Robbie Dawkins. Hey, it's good to have you back here on Radical Radio. And, uh, you know, today is a special day. Uh, my good friend David Harris Jr. is here with us. And uh, uh, we met, good grief, I think it was 12 years ago. Something like that. Well, yeah. I think it was like two, uh, 2011, 2010, somewhere in there. Could be. And uh, met at Bethel Church out in uh, Redding, California. And I think actually and- the first time we, I, I said something to you, Bethel was doing an uh, event at the Civic Auditorium. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And you that's gave right. me a word for our daughters. I don't think you knew we had daughters. We hadn't met. You're like, oh, you got no, a daughter? I didn't know. You're like, you have a daughter? She liked to dance? <laughs> da, 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 da. I'm like, okay. <laughs> she's a dancer i, I, can assure dancer you, I did not know yeah <laughs> i didn't know anything uh it's uh it, it's so incredible when i hear stories back of things like that and I, I don't think even think we, maybe you've mentioned it to me before but i forgot about that that's that's incredible which is to say to everybody that take risks go yes. out give prophetic words preach the gospel keep yeah. that up for sure yeah. Um, but I'm, I'm, I love having David here. Listen, this is not a program that you want to miss and that you want to go without sharing. So hit the share button now, hit like. And uh, if you're not following this program, man, hit the follow. This is one you want to keep up with because we are radical on this radio broadcast. And um, But I'm, I'm really excited. And, and again, let me also say thanks to all of our partners who are partnering with us in order to keep... Uh, bringing such content out and uh, we've got our website there if you want to partner with us for this this uh, podcast uh, to keep it going uh, please uh, feel free to do that we could use all the help that we can get from you so that we can keep going forward with this kind of content but um, David you know God had watching what's happened with you has, yeah, because you because you knew me before yes, the blow up, right? It's, 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 it's always it's kind of fun. Sovereign, it is a yeah. sovereign work some, of God. Yeah, absolutely. And, and God's uh, kindness, God's goodness, and yeah, but mercy. obviously, mercy. There's there's clear that there's incredible talent and giftedness in you that God's put in you for such a time as this, mm-hmm. for this season, for what is happening. Um, one of the things I love about David is he's super he's super outspoken for righteousness and for what is just and holy and I, I it just touches me because we're in a crisis right now in so many levels and yeah. uh, we're in a crisis in our nation we're in the crisis in the world um, you know and when uh, evil people prevail it's when you know good, good people do people nothing. do nothing. And uh, this is a season to see, you know, people uh, speak up and to speak out and, and not to withhold. And especially with this being the month of June and, and being, and, and I, you know, and all the posts that people are doing on, you know, like Memorial Day, they get a day and these guys yeah. get a whole month. Yeah. And Remembering I'm fallen, going, fallen military personnel get one yes. day. Yes. And I'm like, dear God. Veterans how, one day. How? Fourth of how? July. Yeah. One day. <laughs> One day. Independence of our country. One I mean, it, it's just a thing. The tail is wagging the freaking dog. Yeah. And it's so frustrating and it's so irritating. At the same time, you know, um, it does reveal the desperation for this nation and for the world, for, for the gospel and for the truth. Uh, of Christ. And, but it, it, one of the reasons why that I wanted to have you on this is, and I've said this to you personally too, just how grateful I am for you for speaking up and for, you know, um, and especially when you did and, and not at that time having any platform, but just going, Hey, this is a cause we're speaking up for. This is a truth worth, we're speaking, you know, to, uh, and, and I was like blown away, but it's so I believe with my whole heart that when somebody like what's happened with you and when you get that kind of 
And, and it happened with me on a smaller scale, but in, in a different area. But when something like that happens, I cannot not see the sovereignty of God in it. Mm-hmm. And going, this person is, pu- is, is, is part, they're putting out a part of my voice that's not being heard. And so I'm going to advance them mm-hmm. because they're speaking that. That's mm-hmm. what I interpret and what I see, you know, as happened with you and what God's done with you. Uh, in this for you to speak out and for you to be and to, and to um, you know, communicate and to say, hey, listen, this is injustice and, and uh, this is uh, not right. But anyway, how has that, how's that impacted you? Like, how is that in a, I mean, not uh, in, 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 in every level though, you know, because sometimes we'll talk about the success mm-hmm. from the natural part, but then there's also prices to pay in that. There's difficulties in that. Mm-hmm. Um, there's critics that are mean and nasty, you know? Hey, they killed Jesus, so. This is it, yeah. If I'm still breathing and yeah. I have haters, I'm good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because they come out. It really impacted my, it impacted me more when it impacted my wife. Well, I'm thinking of Jennifer when I, when I asked that question. Because yeah. I, I know, you know, and, and uh, yeah. But go ahead, sorry, don't want to interrupt you. Um, the, you know, the first video that went viral was right after the third debate between Trump and Hillary. And I didn't have a public figure page. I had maybe 1,500 friends on Facebook. And I was actually at Rick Joyner's church, Morning Morning Star up in Mm -hmm. uh, South Carolina. And we we were in our room. We watched the uh, debate. And Trump just, he just dismantled, you know, and and put Hillary on blast uh, on so many issues. But the main issues for me as a believer, uh, and really just anybody as a human being, that 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 acknowledges the fact that a baby in the womb is a baby in the womb. A baby yeah, in the womb is the same as a baby outside of the womb. There's just, you know, an inch and a half or so that separates inside from outside. But it's a growing baby that it feels pain, has emotions. And science has proved that now. But this that old freaking law, right, that, that was passed for for Roe v. Wade just gave uh, you know, gave uh states licenses basically to murder babies. Mm-hmm. And the biggest issue for me, Hillary said it, Joe Biden's the same way, and we've seen it advance underneath this administration, um, that what Hillary said that a baby, she doesn't believe, has any rights until it comes out of the womb. Well, you're talking a nine-month baby in the womb mm. that they're okay with with going in, and they literally have to dismember, crush the skull of the baby, dismember the baby in in the womb and pull it out piece by piece. No, people don't normally, they don't understand that, or they're not, they don't want to see that. But when you see it, you can't unsee it. And when you right. understand that's what happens... How can you not champion the lives of our most innocent, uh, you know, most innocent, most vulnerable, that gifts from God, if they weren't here, nobody would be here. It's like we need babies and we need people to respect and honor, you know, why we procreate. We'd have a lot less babies out there if uh, babies being murdered, if we had people that said, you know, I'm going to reserve sex for who I want to build a life with. Yeah. But they, this culture has just created a a, a, a mind a mindless mob millions of of women and men that just say well i'll just treat you know abortion like uh like the pill or you know like uh, contraception mm-hmm. and it's not the baby's already been born the, the baby's already alive and growing and then um they want to kill it and so the biggest thing for me was back then was whoever's the next president's gonna choose two maybe three supreme court justices yeah. which trump did he was able to pick three can you imagine if that was hillary no and <laughs> there was God, three no. diehard yeah. liberals no. Like uh, the, the, the Tawny Jackson, the brown, the, the, right. the, the black lady that can't define a woman that Joe Biden elected. Um, this country would be like done. Yeah. Literally, there'd be no saving grace from the political stance and from the legal stance. So it was that. And uh, and he said, we need to defend the, the rights of babies in the womb. And so it was, I didn't even realize or recognize or, you know, I didn't think about maybe how controversial it was for me. And I don't see myself as a black person. I see myself as a as a as a a spirit being first, but I'm I'm a, I'm a husband course. first, yeah. And then I'm a father, and uh, I'm a business owner, um, and I'm a me- member of the black community as well. Mm-hmm. But it's not I, my identity is not my skin color, yeah. Come but on. unfortunately, for That's a so lot good. of people, their identity is wrapped up in their skin tone. And if you go back to why blacks have voted Democrat for so many years, so many decades, which again is so asinine to me, because the black community in this country has has had such a rich heritage of faith in God, yeah. Yeah, you know you, all the all the the hymns that came out of slavery that the, that the yeah. slaves would sing just to get through the day was faith in God, and if you have faith in God, you have to acknowledge that a baby is a baby, 
inside or outside of the womb. And so for me, for, for anybody that uh, thinks it's okay to, to harm an innocent baby in the womb, their moral compass is so off, yeah. so off that I can't trust anything else that they say or want to do, especially yeah. enacting laws that are then going to govern us, the people. So I just got on Facebook and just poured my heart out on this live video. And the thing hit 50,000 views that night. Like I would get, you know, a thousand or 2000 views on videos. Sure. It hit 50,000 views that night, a hundred thousand by the next morning, 200,000 by the next night, <laughs> three, 400,000. And my inbox was flooded with messages from men, women, black, Asian, Hispanic, native American, you name it. And a theme in those messages was I was going to vote for Hillary. My whole family are Democrats, but because of your video, Come on. I'm going to vote for Trump. <laughs> Come on. Because it's good. a vote for life. Yeah. Like people were saying, yeah. I don't care if I'm if I'm ostracized or cut off from my family, but what you said makes sense. And we have to identify. Right. Come that on. We have to defend the babies. So um, so yeah, that that just kind of started the whole journey that I'm on now, where uh where I have the privilege and honor of getting asked to speak all over the country at churches, yeah, um, at political events. And what's fun is when I get to speak at a political rally. Because they may not know who whoever's asking me. Most people know now, but in the beginning, yeah. they didn't really know that you know I'm a believer or whatever. And I'm a little so shocked they, at that because you're a very outspoken believer. <laughs> yeah, maybe they knew or whatever. But I always I, I always think of it like Jehovah Sneaky. He's like, yeah, I'm going to get my son in there because it's yeah. political stance, and yeah. I'll go in there and I'll talk politics. But at the end of the day, all that means nothing if we don't if we don't Come access on. heaven if we don't That's become it. who we're aligned with, who created us, and become who we're designed to be. Which is why all these people's thinking is where it's at, is yeah. because they're not in that relationship, even pastors. Hey, we're taking a break right now, and I want to encourage you to come and join us August 2nd through the 5th. We are doing an Axe School right here in the United States. Our Axe Schools is usually Arab Kingdom training schools, but this one, August 2nd through the 5th, is going to be the American Kingdom training schools. My dear friend, Andrew Cannon, coming from the UK, is going to join us, and he and I both have been a part of equipping underground churches in dangerous countries throughout the world. Well, we're going to be training you in the power gifts of healing, prophetic deliverance, ministry of manifest presence, sending you out to the streets to bring people that life-forming transformation and encounter with Jesus Christ. You don't want to miss it go to acts a-k-t-s dot global now sign up and we'll see you there now back to radical radio yeah unfortunately even, even oh, yeah. christian leaders who yeah. are not in that place who are who are who are sitting there going for this liberal party that as a ungodly unrighteous anti-god agenda clearly yeah, anti-god agenda 100 percent and yet, I'm, I, I, David, this is the part that blows me away when I see this and I'm looking and I'm going, how can this pastor, you know, th go for that and promote that and be on the page of that, you know, and be okay with it? I, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm blown away. I'm sorry. It took, it took away from your- No, you're 100% correct. I mean, it, it baffles me, especially when you have some of these mega pastors that are supposed to be, that were, in my opinion, leaders, T.D. Jakes. I'm blown absolute, away. Absolute leader. Sure. I watched him for 20 years. Yeah, me too. And then to see him elevate Democrat voices yeah. and and uh, show disdain mm -hmm. for Republicans, it's like, wait a minute. The Republican Party was founded as the anti-slavery party. Exactly. They were the party that was that's that's for uh, minority voices. Abraham Lincoln. Hello. Free, free the slaves. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, sure, there was some muddled stuff back in the 60s, which was actually all a lie. They sure. got twisted around, the Barry Goldwater thing. But uh, but look at the look at the party platform and what they stand for. And if you just look at the party platform, what they stand for, the Republican Party stands for self governance, limited government, uh, personal freedom. Uh, stands for life unapologetically, life of the unborn baby. And uh, you know the the other side is like more government. You know, the government your daddy uh, will take care of you, and that's never a good thing. Yeah. So. Um, it's been an amazing journey. Uh, when my wife gets the hate messages, that's when it really upsets me. That yeah. pisses me off. Because people are just vile. I mean, yeah. people just say that some of the, I mean, it's like the evil, literally the demon is speaking through the person. And if yeah. you can imagine some it's of the, right. something horrible a demon would say to somebody that try to get in their head, yeah. well, that's the stuff that comes across in direct messages and instant messages. Yeah. But they'll do it to my wife. Talk about me, talk about her, talk about what they want to do to her. Yeah. And then, uh, 
Yeah, we had the we had the alert. I had I had an FBI uh, reach out to me actually and say, make sure you let me know these messages because these these yeah. cross the line. We can go find who they are and yeah, and, and if any it. of them are terrorist threats at any at any point mm -hmm. or where they're threatening harm or threatening yeah. Oh, yeah. those are terrorist threats. Yeah. You know, I I thought I, it's interesting <laughs> you say that because I thought you know and and what I, what I I loved Jennifer's vulnerability in coming out recently and just saying, hey, this is how this has affected me. And this is what, this is how it's hurt me. This is how it's went, like the, the vulnerability of that. But I, I was, you know, I was like, man, how courageous and how strong, mm -hmm. even though somebody could get bitter, you know, at that platform as a result of that, instead was stopping and going, okay, wait a minute. Now I see the plot of the enemy to try to deplete my identity, yeah. you know, by doing that. And I was so proud of her for for speaking up and, and being so vulnerable with it and how it affected her and hurt her. And people don't realize that that these these things, uh, you know, and, and, and or maybe they do. And that's what's a little more disturbing yeah. to me is maybe yeah. they do know the effect that it has. Well, we certainly the, the know Satan knows. The people sending the message, I think they hope, right? They hope it mm. does. That's why they do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and again, they're blinded. They're spiritually blind. They have no, they have no clue what they're doing. Uh, and so they just think, you know, if I can make this person feel this way or that way, it's just, but it's just ugly and it's evil. And I don't, I don't really see that coming from the conservative side. No, you know, it's like conservatives. We, the, the conservatives that I've hang around, and I've been in a lot of conservative circles. Mm -hmm. At a lot of events, and when I'm speaking at events to hundreds or thousands, you know, sometimes I'll ask how many people in here, you know, got, you know, chastised or, ber or berated if you left the Democrat Party and hands will shoot up like crazy. And then I say, how many, how many of you in here, you know, have ever met somebody that left the Republican Party or, or left being a conservative, uh, which isn't a, normally a lot. There's not yeah, very many, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, is always, which is always an interesting question. You know, I've heard a lot about people waking up and leaving the Democrat or liberal, you know, party. But I don't hear too many people say they were a conservative and then they became a liberal. No, I, I don't either. <laughs> but if somebody did, I'd be like, hey, you know what? I'm going to pray for you. Yeah, yeah, you sure. Know, I, I hope you wake up. Right. Because obviously you've been deceived on something. Yeah. But I'm not going to berate somebody and be, right. be rude or evil to them. Which does, it does reveal the enemy's hand. Yeah, absolutely. It does reveal Satan's hand in that because, I mean, it's, it's, it, it's what he's trying to do. It's the ob objective that he's that he's that he's trying to achieve and we have to realize and one of the things i'm constantly doing is stopping especially with like again where we're where we're at right now with uh this month and and them calling it you know pride month and and all this it, i'm i'm taking a look at at the situation and i'm like first of all this reveals how desperately we're in need of of an awakening of a of a spiritual divine massive revival yeah which, which is national which is an awakening versus just a revival uh to take place and 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 of course in history we see that stage being set by times like these and mm -hmm. so you know we're anticipating that we're praying for that but also to realize it's 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 so easy for that needle to move the other way from yeah. one side to the other i've had so many people reach out to me and and dear friends some some friends that People would all know if I said their names right here, people would know them um, in Christian circles that where their children are all of a sudden the agenda, the demonic agenda mm -hmm. of confusing people and stopping and saying, hey, so if you're if you felt a, a little awkward with your friends or if you then you must be of a different gender, or you must be yeah. transgender, you must be a homosexual, you must be, and because if you feel that teenager hasn't felt awkward? I was gonna say, I grew up my Every whole life teenager, feeling that way, yeah, and they would look at you and go, well, awkward. then you're gay. Right. You know, it's a demonic plot. Yeah, it is. And we have to realize that, and, and what people are getting confused with is they're going, but no, that's loving to just be, and this idea of tolerance, you know, I loved it. I don't remember uh, who was who just posted it. It's like some of, some of the things that, uh, some of the tables were inviting people to, Jesus would be turning over. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. Yeah. You know, there's, there's absolute truth to that because this is a, 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 what is being, you know, communicated as something of him, but there is a clear underlying and people are thinking uh, this tolerance this acceptance which is was none of jesus's messages first right. of all yeah you know um he was he forgiving was, he was oh yeah he was but he wasn't good. tolerant if, he called all, those he, religious leaders whitewashed walls skeletons <laughs> bones all this i mean i mean in my book that's pretty much keep probably cussing back then i don't know those are oh, cuss sure. words or what but he was going off and i'm not saying that jesus was cussing or 
using the cuss words <laughs> we do, but he was going off on them religious people. And the, the, the fact, I, I just did a, a segment where we talked about he was good, but he wasn't nice, mm. you know, because he said harsh things. Mm -hmm. Let the dead bury the dead to the guys going, ah, I got to go first pay with my daughter, then dot, dad, then I'll come and follow you. And he's like, yeah. no, let the dead bury the dead. Mm -hmm. I mean, there was always this provocative challenge thing, but it was a, a challenge for the greater good. It was a challenge for the purpose of advancing God's kingdom and, the yeah. perp and, and, and doing that. And yet we're seeing this just demonic bewitching mm -hmm. that is that is coming over and i and what i'm so concerned about is is how i'm seeing more and more of the church moving that direction and yeah. moving and and it starts off you know the scripture says little foxes spoil the vine mm -hmm. it's little decisions you know you start off a little bit here but by here you're way off track yeah and it seems well, it's like sin, which is being out of alignment with God. Yeah. Right. And that, that, oh, that saying that I've heard since I was a little is, you know, sin will always take you farther than you want to go, make you pay more than you want to pay and make you stay longer than you want to stay. <laughs> That's Period. Good. I like that. That is so true. And, and so, I mean, it, this is a time where, you know, we as godly people or people who say we're following Christ, I mean, I'm honestly looking at people and going, yeah, I'm a Christ follower, like I'm, a, I, but I'm I'm a part of this camp or part. I'm like, if that camp is not holding to the standards of the Word of God, and another thing that just blows me away is this whole thing. Well, if the words weren't in red, then it's not, and Jesus didn't say it, then it doesn't count. Well, then you're throwing out all the Ten Commandments. Mm. Then you're saying, oh, you know, me going to sleep in with another dude's wife is okay. I hadn't even heard that. People are trying to People say that. People are saying that. Oh, oh, David, it's widespread. If Jesus didn't so say So then the it, Bible isn't the inspired word of God. Exactly. I mean, that's, that's what is, sums that up. Jesus is, is the Logos. Word. Yeah, he's the, he's word the word of word. God. <laughs> yeah. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. First 14, John. And the word became flesh, flesh. Yeah. and dwelt among us. It, 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 people who aren't counting that or are looking to that, I mean, we're not we're not taking in the 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 truth of who Christ is, and 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 it's writing off. And I mean, it's we we had had a incident here in the DFW area where we're at right now, where you know a church had a big worship festival, had a big name worship guy, and then they got up and they said, you know, if if anybody's saying that you can't be in a gay relationship. That uh, literally went as far as to say that's blaspheming the Holy what? Spirit. Yes, I think I saw a video. I didn't know that was in the DFW area, though. Yeah, I didn't know what church no, it was. No, it happened. It was downtown Dallas, and wow. we ended up doing a segment on that to go. Wait a minute, that we gotta. I gotta call this out. This yeah. is deception. This is a lie. Yeah, you know that is not blaspheming the Holy Spirit. And it, but we're in a place. You know what? what do you recommend? Like, what do you, from your perspective, the seat that you're in, like, how do we, how do we address those things? And how do, how should be believers be responding? And how, you know, what, what do you, what would you, what do you say to people in, in, in that situation? I, I would just say that for every single individual, if you're watching or listening to this, the most important thing, the most important thing is your relationship, your intimate relationship Come with, on. with Holy Spirit. You've got to have an intimate relationship with Holy Spirit in order to walk the way Jesus did. Uh, in order to see the way the, the way Jesus did, Jesus said, I only say what I hear my father say and do what I see my father do. And he was able to do that because he was filled and he was in unity with Holy Spirit. That's that's our connection. That's why when Jesus said, I got to go to, to the father so that the comforter can come and he will guide you into all truths. There's so much more that that God wants to do in your life but we have to allow him to. We have to invite him in. Come we on. have to ask him. And and there's so much cloudiness that can be in our minds, so many distractions uh, that can take up our time and take up our attention. Uh, if we don't be, in, if we're not intentional about getting close to Holy Spirit, spending time in His presence, spending time in worship, you know, I have, um, I, I had a, I had an amazing journey uh, with with Papa. We call I call him Papa. He's a good daddy. I had an amazing journey with the Father, with with Yeshua, with the Son, and with Holy Spirit leading up to before that first video went went crazy. And I I know that he he allowed that, he wanted that to happen first. I welcomed it and I went after it. But that helped give me that helped give me a, gave me a a foundation for them to be able to handle yeah everything that's come from you know this explosion on you know social media uh, and with everything else that's happened. 
but it came from, it came from a desperate desire. Like I, I had just, kept, I messed up, you know, I, I just, I had issues in my life that sure. I hadn't taken oh, care of, yeah. that I hadn't, I hadn't been intentional about getting rid of saying, okay, this is a problem. And instead of addressing it and going and finding the help, finding, you know, I went through, uh, uh, I went through, um, um, uh, I'm, tr I'm trying to think of the acronym now, but it's, uh, uh, restoring the foundations, RTF. Yeah, yeah, I went RTF, through that. Yeah. And that pulled, it's like a, it's a very intense, like three day thing, Powerful, 15 hour thing yeah. where we, we all are carrying potentially, unless we've gotten rid of it, we can all be carrying the issues and sins and, 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 and hiccups and, and stuff from our, from our lineage generations past, yeah, right? Right. The sins of the father passed down to the third and fourth generation, which means up to your third and fourth generation, you could be carrying stuff and dealing with stuff that if they didn't deal with, now it's in your bloodline and you got to deal with it. And so unless you get with somebody that knows how to say, hey, I'm going to get this off of you. We need to identify this and get and get rid of it. Unless you take the time to address it, you could be going around, around, around the circle, around these mountains. Mm -hmm. And for me, I could have a, you know, a good season and then, but I would just, I would let that issue stay in there and then it would just slam me. And then I'd have a good season. I'd let it, and then it slam me. And it was just these cycles. It wasn't good for me. It wasn't it was horrible for my family. So I had to get really serious about about dealing with those things, and uh, and then just going after God, like you need water and you've been in the desert for forty days. Yeah. And uh, so I had some pretty amazing encounters with God in my secret place. You mm. know, for me, my secret place, I just turn on worship. And for me, since this is radical, I'll share it. I don't normally share the the details, but I do it in the shower because I'm just mm. I'm yeah. naked before God. Right. Yeah. And something about the, the water on me, and I'll turn worship on, and it's I like it loud, and I'll just go after it and worship, and I'll just praise and worship, and uh, well, I began doing that, and at one point I actually had an encounter. I went to heaven. Did I tell so, you this story? Yeah, you did. I love it. But tell me, so, tell it as if you hadn't told me because I wasn't to hear it. So I'm just worshiping, and I'm just I'm just praising. I'm just worshiping. And I'm listening to you know normally it's Bethel music on my mm -hmm. iPad or my iPhone. And, uh, and then I, I see myself like pull myself up, like on this, this platform and it's like solid glass. And it's just like a big suspended platform. I see myself pull myself up on top of it. And then I'm, I stand up and I, when I look off in the, in the distance, it seems like it was maybe a hundred yards away. I saw the father sitting there hmm. on the throne and my spirit like erupted like a, like a long lost relative hadn't seen a you know, hundred years. You hadn't seen your, your grandpa or something uh, or your father. My spirit recognized him as my father, and I just was overwhelmed and and overcome with just this immense sense of that's my father. He's not just yeah. the father; that's my father. And I just began shouting like I'm in the shower. I'm shouting, "That's my father! That's my father!" Like for five, wow. six, seven, eight minutes, I'm shouting, "That's my father!" I just had this massive heart to heart revelation of him as my father. Come on, my father. Mm. You know, we have our earthly father. Sure, we identify. That's my dad. Yeah. yeah, period. That's my dad. And hopefully you're proud. Yeah. Right? And you feel good about your dad. Uh, a lot of people don't because, of, you know, however that relationship was. But every every child should feel good about their dad. Uh, and you recognize him. So that's how my spirit, that's how I recognized the father was as my father. It became mm. personal. And then I saw Jesus standing next to him and it started all over again. And I had this revelation of that's my brother. Mm. That's my brother. Like he's my older brother. He's my brother. And uh, so this whole thing lasts maybe, I don't know, 15 or 20 minutes. And then I, and then I just kind of came out of it. And then your mind starts playing with you a little bit. And it's like, did that happen? I'm like, no, my spirit's like, no, that happened. <laughs> and so I was late for church that morning. It was a Sunday and I, I went to church and it was packed and I was a little late and the cars were, Bethel was just so packed and the cars were lining the road. And, and I walked in the, uh, I walked in the back side uh, entrance and uh, people standing up on the sides. And, and I was like, maybe I'll just come back tonight. And Holy Spirit said, no, stay. So I stayed and Bob Jones was there speaking that day. Oh, yeah. And he says, basically, I'm summarizing, but he says, uh, he says, you know, we used to talk about going to heaven. Like that was an event that happened at the end of your life. He said, I'm here today to tell you that that's not accurate. You can access heaven every day. So the very morning, the very morning that, I, that that happened, <laughs> Bob Jones is like, you can go to heaven. And then he began to uh, lay out scripture. Yeah. Now we are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. He began to lay all these different scriptures out. And he's like, tonight, I'm going to, he's all come back. I'm going to walk you through an exercise to help you access heaven. 
So, uh, so that just solidified it. So that has been a place for me to go back to. I go back often. Uh, I probably should go back more than I do, but, uh, but I go back often. I get Mm. in worship and, uh, it's like a portal for me. I just, I just, I'm worshiping and then I can see myself and I get, I get up on that, that suspended, uh, uh, platform, uh, that's suspended. And then there's like a big chasm of, of, of like black. Yeah. It's just dark. And then there's, and then I see the, the father on the throne and Jesus. And, uh, and visually the way I could describe it is if you've seen Lord of the Rings, mm-hmm. you know, when Frodo puts the ring on yeah, and everything turns kind of black and yeah. misty. It's like he's in the spirit realm. Or That's something. how it looked. Yeah. Come on. That's how it looked. Wow. So it wasn't the, anything natural, like, you know, like we see right now, but I had some amazing encounters there. Wow. And, uh, one of them, uh, one of them was when, when the father, uh, told me, call me daddy, I'll, I'll share the whole thing. So I, I'm, I'm up on this, I'm up on this platform. And there's always, there's this big gap between me and, and where the father and, and Jesus are. And then uh, I'm looking behind me. I think I was kind of like, or I felt this unction look behind me. And I realized I had these big giant wings. Mm. And as soon as I recognized I had these big wings, I realized I didn't matter if there was a big gap between mm. me and the father. Yeah. So I flew up and I landed right at his feet. And then I was terrified. I really felt like this terrifying, like, like this is, God the Father, and I'm at his yeah, feet. Yeah. And I didn't move and I was just at his feet. And then he just so, so gently welcomed me like up into his lap and into his arms. Mm. Just like a loving father, he just pulled me up there and then he kissed me on the cheek. Wow. And he said, Call me daddy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Woo. Oh so that's that's why I call him daddy. That's why I feel the freedom to call him daddy. He told me to. And what did Jesus say on the cross? Mm. Abba. Abba, father, Abba is intimate form of father, like daddy. Yeah. So uh, I'm telling you, when you have those kind of encounters, you know, with, with Holy Spirit, with the father, with Jesus, when you have those encounters, it changes you. It changes you. It makes you hungry for more. You know, there's more. And for me, it's aligned me more with him and his heart because that's because that's what he wants. And that's, 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 that's how we can be the best version of ourselves is to be as close to him as possible. Yeah. And and knowing his heart, trying to trying to know his heart. You know, you become like what you worship. Yeah. And so the closer you get, then then everything else becomes starts to become clearer, right? Yeah. So if somebody's cloudy in their in their mind about what they're going through, about this or that or it doesn't really it doesn't matter what it is. The yeah. closer you get to the Father through Jesus, the closer you get to them, um the clearer everything else will become. The hunger you you will become, yeah, uh, for more of Him because we're not, you know. I've been reading through, I've read it through a couple of times now. God's generals, yeah, yeah, yeah. Robert Robert uh, Learden and yeah. uh, the stuff that they were doing a hundred years ago, the stuff these generals were doing a hundred years ago, a uh, hundred and fifty years ago. It's like where is that at today? Yeah, yeah. In America, the stuff that they were doing, right? Where is that at today? So there's just, there's so much more for, uh, for there's so much more that God has for his kids, Yes, but we have to want it. Yeah. We have to not get distracted by everything else that's going on, Yeah, whether it's the calamity or whatever. I mean, that's like the, it's like the disciples in the boat with a storm. Yes. They, fear, they were fearing for their life. Yeah. We're going to die. Right. And a lot of people, it's like, you look at all the news and you see what's happening in our country, mm-hmm. the collapse of the dollar. You know, Trump being indicted again. They're trying to lock him. He's 76 years old. If he, if they get him with one charge, he's in jail for 20 years. He'll be in there for the rest of his life. <laughs> and and all, he's and that's, that's why I wear stuff. the shirt. It's like, yeah. they're not after me. They're after you. He's in the way. They get him out of the way. Yeah. yeah. There is nothing to keep them from turning the USA into the USSA. Yeah. The United there Socialist States of Come America. On. On. And if that happens, I mean, there, there's going to be, I mean, I, I hate to say it, but I definitely think there'll be civil wars. Yeah, there'll be wars. I, I agree because there's too many people with guns that love their constitution yeah. and love the flag and what it represents that are going to say the the reason for the Second Amendment is exactly this reason, so that a well armed militia can withstand a a, a a tyrant a tyrannical government. Right, it's the whole purpose. Yeah, I mean it's what we did with the Brits. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know it's yeah. the whole point of it was to go uh, tyranny. We're we're tired of being under this tyranny. Yeah, and you know and I'm not really... I'm not supporting that in any way. No, I'm no, no, not no. encouraging we're not, we're that not, in any no. way. Yeah, I'm it, just saying I I've seen a lot <laughs> yeah. of people. I've met a lot of people. Yeah, that have told me that you know throughout the rallies and events I've been to that they're like there's too many of us with guns 
right. to let a tyrannical government just try to run us over. Yeah. But when they do it from the law down, and when they enact laws and they push us towards a a, 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 a currency, a global currency ultimately, yeah. and then a national currency, it's happened, in, it's happened in two or three other countries already where the country literally shut off the banks, mm-hmm. forced everybody to go get their currency. And when your currency is digital only, they control you. Yeah. Control what you spend, so where you scary. spend it, what you can buy, if you can travel, all of it. So again, all this stuff, if you and, and that's just part of it. You look at all the stuff and it can make a person so fearful, right? Scared mm-hmm. for what what do we do? And the answer is Jesus. The disciples yeah, were scared. On. What are we gonna do? We're gonna die. And Jesus is like, Let me show you. We gotta get closer to him. Yeah. And you know, that's the truth of what I love is and what I've seen with you and, and with your podcasts, with your programs and stuff like that, is you, we have to point out, you know, I, re- I remember years ago going to Bible college and they were like, the, 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 the purpose of recognition of being a sinner, you, Lord, forgive me because I've, I've sinned and I need you to come and forgive me. I need mm-hmm. you to cleanse me, you know, come into my life, the, the accepting and, and embracing Christ, the sinner's prayer is what yeah, we call yeah. it. The whole point of it is the acknowledgement of being in need of a savior. Yeah. And that's the problem and when we start taking these sinful patterns, these sinful lifestyles, these sinful things, and start making excuses for it, calling it love, we're actually calling acceptance of sin and acceptance of thing that is contrary to God. Mm. The truth is, and your message is, what happened to you in that shower today is what the entire nation world needs. Yeah. Because the truth is, is I'm not convinced that people are just, these people that have woken up and switched from this liberal, socialist, communist uh, heading direction group and party, when they've had that switch, it typically is because something has opened their eyes to the truth and something, and when I say to the truth, I'm talking, it typically has to do with realization of what I'm a part of is not righteous yeah, and what I'm a part of is not godly. And so there is an, there's or, somehow- Or what I'm a part of is is, is evil or has evil intentions yes. lying. I was at the premiere for uh, Plandemic 3 and it's called The Awakening. Oh, really? And it's amazing. When is and that it's coming? it's it came well it came out oh, it's streaming it. now ah. it's streaming now it was only they they premiered it in in Austin um it didn't show on theaters <laughs> interesting in Austin yeah, yeah. They, it didn't premiere on theaters but now you can stream it but it follows the life of uh, of the, the the gentleman that wrote it his name is Mickey he was actually on tour with Bernie Sanders and he was a part of their their tech team and doing videos wow. and stuff and and somewhere along his journey he realized he's like well wait a minute how you know, if we're pushing the socialist, this democratic socialism, how are we going to be able to fund all these free programs that socialism talks about? Uh, you know, that everybody should have free health care and free college and, you know, all these things. How are we going to do that without raising taxes on everybody else and making everybody pay? like he had that epiphany and nobody can give him an answer. They just said, Bernie Sanders, Bernie Sanders. So he stepped back. And so it's amazing. That's that's how it kind of opens up to give you a viewpoint of who he is. But then he lost his brother to AZT, which is a drug that uh, was prescribed and promoted to help fight HIV when it first came out mm. uh, 30 years ago. And uh, his brother died of AZT. Who was the guy, who was the guy uh, promoting on TV that AZT was safe and effective? Fauci. Oh, of course. So here 30 years oh later, God. Fauci's promoting yeah. these jabs as safe and effective. And, this, and, and Mickey's like, I can't stay quiet on this. So he began to dig and research. So it's an amazing movie. Um, uh, Plandemic Three: The Awakening is Man, just have to it. search it, yeah, and you can stream it and support their groups. They're doing it great. So for him, it was a realization, yeah, that he was a part of something that was lying, and that was absence of truth. Lies are opposite yeah. of truth, yeah. So whatever it is for people that's going to wake them up, they they got to wake up. I want to read this. I think I remember reading this to you uh, to touch on the uh, uh, to touch on where we're going and what's necessary uh, in that book, God's Generals. Mm-hmm. It uh, there's there's you know ten twelve generals from uh, from uh, the Azusa Street Revival, uh, the gentleman uh, William Seymour, Seymour that's the, mm-hmm. that, that that kind of birthed that movement. I mean, he's to, he's uh, the he's the spiritual father of everybody in charismatic and Pentecostal. We can all yeah. go back to William Seymour being the, the spiritual daddy, really. Yeah, of yeah, all yeah. Of us. yeah. And he got a lot of his stuff from um, uh, Maria Woodworth Edder. She was yeah. kind of the spiritual yes, mother, really, ultimately of this anything Pentecostal in, in this country. Yeah. It was Maria Woodworth Edder. 
she led the she led the charge on that and and opened up for it. Um, uh, John G. Lake, you know, mm-hmm. I think he got some stuff from Marie as well. But John G. Lake, he had a his his uh, uh, healing school in uh, Seattle. Mm-hmm. They had documented like one or I think it was over over a hundred thousand um, healings. Yeah, and this is in Seattle. The Better Business Bureau reached out and said we need to. They keep getting all these front page ads. The papers, the media would report on the miracles. And the Better Business Bureau is like, we need to, we want to find out if this is actually true. Or, yeah. And he's like, sure, how, how about I send you, you know, I think he sent like 20 people that had given their testimonial. He said, you go interview them for yourself. He said, and then you bring in your doctors, your attorneys, your scientists, anybody you want to, and we'll meet again and have one final, you know, talk before to answer any questions before you make your decision. And by the time they got through, they didn't, I don't even think they got through the 20 people that he sent. But they started to go through those individuals, their lives, what happened, documentation, medical documentation, reports, pictures, whatever their ailment was. They didn't even get to the end of it, and they, and they reached out, and he said, you ready to schedule the final you know, meeting? And they said, we don't have to. There's no need. <laughs> like, like, these miracles are <laughs> it's enough. They're, they're enough. That's so good. They, they said, you didn't even tell us the half of it. Wow! You didn't even on. tell us the half of it. Not we're even gonna, that you were distorting. You weren't even. Uh, you weren't even amplifying. Yeah, exactly. Yet. You were putting it, making it lower than it was. Those, so they're that. so they're like we're giving a fo- a complete Come green on. light on this, and like seventy five percent of the people that would go to his his uh, healing his healing rooms, yeah, weren't even believers. They didn't, they weren't even active members of the church. Yeah, but they heard God was showing up to do miracles. So on his uh, before he died, before he went to heaven. Uh, He said this, and I remember I read read this to you, but I I felt like I was supposed to read this too, because the darkness, the spiritual darkness that is, that is, that is seemingly in the natural looks like it's just taking over so much territory. Mm -hmm. It just seems like it's taking over so much territory. Schools, politics, national, local politics, churches that are, that are turning sideways. It's like, you know, you got the, the, the global stuff with the global currency, other countries that are seeing yeah, this happen. Yeah, come on. Yeah, that's true. And John G. Lake said this. He said, I can see as my spirit discerns the future and reaches out to touch the heart of mankind and the desire of God. There is coming from heaven a new manifestation of Holy Spirit in power. And that's what it's all about. It's all about a manifestation of Holy Spirit in power that will shatter everything that come the enemy on. is doing. It'll yeah. shatter it. There's no... There's no, there's no competition there. Yeah. It'll absolutely destroy it. There is coming from heaven, a new manifestation of the Holy spirit in power. And that new manifestation will be in sweetness. Mm. Think how ugly so many people are right now. Yeah. They just walk in this ugly bitter, you know, the people that are, I think they're right. I saw this video yesterday. This guy was in a a drive-thru line at Starbucks, I think. And Starbucks gets a phone call and the lady comes to the, to the window and says, the guy behind you in line just called us to tell us you were a Trump supporter because he had Trump 2024 on the back of his window. Mm-hmm. He's like, what they think? What do you think that was going to do? And she's like, I don't know. It's kind of weird. So then he, the guy pulls up and, and he's like, hey, Trump 2024, God bless you. He's leading with kindness, right? Yeah. And the guy behind him's like, you know, just railing all this negative stuff at him and call him, calls him a xenophobe. <laughs> the guy's a Mexican-American. He's like, yeah, I'm an actual uh, immigrant from Mexico. And he's like, well, just wait till you get the poor, just all this ugliness. So jump back to this, Holy Spirit, uh, a new manifestation of the Holy Spirit in mm-hmm. power. And that new manifestation will be in sweetness, in love, in tenderness, Come on. and in the power of the Spirit. Beyond anything, mm. beyond anything that your heart or mind ever saw, the lightning of God will flash through men's souls. Mm. The sons of God come on, let it come, Lord. will meet the sons of darkness and prevail. Ah, <laughs> there, it <is. laughs> there it is. That's our promise. It's it's the sons of God, and that's daughters as well, of course. It's sons sure, and daughters. Yeah. Gender neutral in that scripture. It's, yeah. it's the uh it's the it's it's Papa's kids that know him. Yeah. And have that on. intimate relationship with him. And it's like, look at Bill, right? Papa Bill. Yeah. You know, he's, you know, I was at Bethel the first day he showed up to preach. Yeah. I was at church. We were at Bethel before he came. Yeah. Bill Johnson. So so yeah, yeah, Bill Johnson at Bethel church. So when, so when, when he came the first time I was there, I was hooked and, and I felt God in him. I can feel it. Right. Like I feel God in you. Mm. And, uh, but he's so, he's got just this gentleness, this sweetness. So true. You know, um, the God man, right. Serenity. Yeah. 
she's like, when she was talking to Bill, she's like, and she was like, Jesus was looking at me. Yeah. You know, I could see Jesus in his eyes. She could feel it. Can you imagine when we have an army of believers that walk with that gentleness? Come on. That that sweetness, that love and power of the Holy Spirit. So good. The sons of darkness can't, they can't, they'll, they can't do anything about Dude, that. Dude, this is what I love about you. Like, uh, so back uh, a couple of years ago, Antifa was going crazy in the Seattle area and all this. And and you texted me and you said, hey, you know, let's go to Seattle. And yeah. I was like, yeah, yeah, let's go tell them the truth. And let's go. And I was, I was riled up. Yeah. I was like mad. I was like, you know, these young ignorant kids that are being duped and let's go, you know, school them on the, this. And you're like, dude, I just want to go pray for him and love him with the love of Jesus. And I was like, uh, I am the minister here. I'm the ordained guy. But you just spoke. It, it, and I was like, yes. Oh. And so when I ended up, we were both there. We weren't there together. But in January 6th, and and when I when I went to the BLM Plaza and reached out to minister to, the, to those guys and the Antifa guys that were there, uh, which was very few, Mm -hmm. Um, uh, because they were there the next day, mm -hmm. clearly. Yeah. But when we were there, I, 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 that passage of Paul where he says the love of Christ compels me. Mm -hmm. Now I've used that David so many times going to Afghanistan and to R Iran and saying, I got to keep the focus that people are not my enemy, mm -hmm. but they were my opportunity for the gospel. They're my opportunity to express the love. But in, in this being so upset about what's happening to my nation, the nation that I live in, the nation that was, you know, separated and consecrated for God and, and took a stand and our forefathers who did that, you know, seeing that being violated and I was mad and I was, and, and I'm Scottish. So I, I got a fight in me. <laughs> right? <laughs> you know what I, mean? I got and, a lot of Irish in me. Yeah. Yeah, well, there you go. My we're mom's the, last we're really the same blood. And then yeah. <laughs> I got a quarter Irish too. So there's that there as well. Go. But all of a sudden, um, you know, when you said that, it just was, the Lord said, Keep that in mind. Listen to David. Keep that because remember that's at the forefront. And I had to con I had to calm myself and say, yeah, we need to make this uh, about because that's really what's going to change the nation. You know, obviously voting for leaders that are going to open the door for that. Yeah, that are going to they themselves may not be the person, and I don't even know that that we need them to be. What we need are people who. Fear God, yeah. have the fear of the Lord in them, who will open the door to see, the, uh, you know, the righteous prevail, to see the righteousness of God, you know, stand up. But this is more than ever. So when I talk about speaking up, this is our time as believers to speak the truth in love. Yeah. And to lovingly look at somebody and saying, listen, I know you're confused. I know you're not sure who or what you are. But Jesus loves you and he wants to heal that inside of you because that is a brokenness. It's not who you are. Right. It's a lie and a deception of the enemy. That's what love does. Yep. And it doesn't just permit and give leeway, you know, to see this, you know, demonic led agenda of this few who are controlling the world and dominating it, you know, take take place because it is it is a they're, they really are truly trying to circumvent God himself. Oh, yeah. You know, they and trying God. to dethrone him so they can see, take that seat. Communism is 100% anti-faith, anti-God, anti-Bible. 100%. Every, every country that's ever welcomed socialism or went that way towards socialism, communism, not only have hundreds of millions of people died, right? It's killed over 100 million people in the last 100 years. Um, but, uh, but replacing God with government is the agenda. It yeah. is the agenda. It's it's Carl. It was Karl Marx's agenda. Yes, it was. Uh, it's in the book Rules for Radicals mm -hmm. um, that uh, Barry Sortoro, uh, Obama, right? He his yeah. his father was a radical communist. It's it's the agenda of the Democrat Party that's that believes we little peons don't know how to govern our own lives. We should be governed, and what stands in the way of that is faith in God. Mm -hmm. That's where the war is. And so, what do we need? We need more faith in God. How do you yeah. get that? Get more of God. Get around more godly people. That's right. Get in church. Get in Bible study. Read your Bible. Spend time in worship. The closer you get to God, the more your faith will increase. Whatever you feed grows. Yeah, come on. If you're not feeding things that are going to grow your faith, don't wonder why you you, you have small faith. Yeah. You know, Jesus, did he, he said it a lot. Oh, ye have little faith. Yeah. Right? If you had faith the size of a mustard seed. Yes, come on. Well, well mustard seed, it's like, well, you could see it, right? It's right. tiny, but you could see it. It's there. You know it's there. And if you yeah. know... 
something's there, they can't take that away from you. Yeah. So we need we need faith filled believers that are you going know, after the heart of God and and walking in power. We did an equipping trip in Cuba um, last year, and I've been to Cuba before, um, and so I saw the devastation of communism and saw and 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 the godlessness. Atheism is their national religion, mm-hmm. which every communist country that's the case. Yeah. Atheism, oh, it's yeah. China, everything is the same, and so it's a it's a because. They want you to move away from your faith because that is that's an endanger to them being in control. You 100%. know, that's competition. Yeah. And and we were sitting there, two different ends of the island uh, uh, of Cuba, Las Tunas, and and Havana, and had uh, like a thousand young people at each conference. Mm. Now the government can't even get. Literally, the pastors were telling us they said the government can't even get twenty five people to come to one of their rallies. Nobody shows up. Wow. Nobody wants to. Wow. You know, but here there were, je- and of course, the the very next day we get there, we get busted, we get drug in, and they're immediately saying, you know, you can't talk about Jesus, you can't pray, and we're like, do you understand? And we're like, yeah, we understand. Not saying we're going to comply, but we understand, right? <laughs> and so we proceeded anyway. What in it? And I, what the message that I had for those young people is, I stopped and I said, listen. It's so, and I said, we're in the same position in our country. We're not, we're not, you're the future for us if we keep heading down the road we're on. Mm -hmm. But I said to them, I said, but you can even now turn this around. But we have to remember, we're not wrestling with flesh and blood. These are principalities and powers. This is a demonic thing that is trying to, and if we try to take it from the natural, we'll lose. Try to fight it even as a natural battle. You know, now don't get me wrong. I totally believe and know you know, when, you cannot listen to the battle hymn of the Republic and not realize that, you know, the uh, Union Army was obviously something that was on God's side. And yeah. what was happening with Confederate was the enslavement of the people. And, and that was wrong. That was sinful. That was it was horrid. At the same time, which, by the way, you talk about, you know, I, I, I just uh, watched it again. I saw it before, but I watched it again with the emancipation and I, and and just how much scripture was in there mm. that I felt like was truly relating to what that time. But hearing to say this, and I'm getting back to my point, hearing scripture being quoted from both sides, mm. hear the oppressors. I don't know if you've seen it, but hear the oppressors are oh, quoting yeah. scripture they use to it. submit as a yeah. slave. Yeah. You're supposed to obey your masters. Yeah. You're supposed, you know, and it's not hearing the instruction of Paul of, hey, don't forget, as the song says, that slave is your brother. Yeah, You treat him like a brother, even though they work for you. It wasn't, and everybody takes that as saying he was endorsing slavery, which is not true. He was in, he was saying, I can't combat the law of the land. I can't fight that. So remember, take care of these as if they're your own family. Yeah. Which was a totally different message and a totally different, you know, thing of of you know what was truly being lived out. You know, they weren't living that scripture. They weren't living that. But it really opened my eyes to the fact of how deceived people can be. And how they can get into a deception. And even some of the actors that are in there, I'm going, well, they're in some deception. Yeah. Clearly, you know, but the, but yet the, 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 the stopping and seeing that the truth ultimately, of course, is prevail, prevailing by the emancipation proclamation and the, and the freedom, but realizing that time from that liberation to the time, just like with D Day, from the time that, you know, it, it's it's done until it's fulfilled, seen, yeah, yeah mm-hmm. as being fulfilled, is a is a process too. And so we have to realize that standing with that righteous agenda and realizing we aren't really wrestling against this is a demonic agenda. This is a spiritual battle. Mm-hmm. This is a spiritual battle that we are in, and that we have to stay focused on. And so, if we would take even above protesting all this other stuff, take all that energy, put it into sharing the gospel with your atheist neighbor, with your liberal neighbor, with your liberal coworkers, sharing the gospel, stay focused on bringing them into the light because it's the thing that illuminated yours and my eyes Mm -hmm. to the reality of a love of a father that we didn't know loved that loved us that much cared us that much and it transformed us. That's the transformation that's only going to see our nation and our world be conformed. And that's why Jesus, 
you know, is saying go into all the world. Yeah. You know, this is the only thing. People ask me all the time, why would, why do you go to Afghanistan? Why do you go to, you know, are you crazy? You know, don't you realize? And I, I quote that scripture from Paul, the love of Christ compels me. David, I can't stop myself. Yeah, I've tried. I can't stop myself. Mm -hmm. It's the love of Christ that compels me. And that's what has to compel us to speak the truth and to speak it in love and to not just stand by and to not just be, uh, you know, passive and somehow think that's being loving because it truly isn't. And it's, and it's what's leading us in a dark, a very, very, very dark place. But, um, anyway, I'm sorry, I got off on a rant. You're on it. Go ahead. You're on it. <laughs> but that, I, and what I love is I know that that's your message. You know that. And I've heard you say it time and time and time again of, of that. We've got to realize that the only thing that's going to truly change, we need leaders that are going to invite the reality of God that are going to have the fear of God. At, I least, remember at least not, uh, at least not inhibit it. Yeah. Right. Not it's like we don't, we, we don't necessarily, hey, a, a spirit filled believer that's a, that's in politics. It's a politician that helps to, you know, write and enact laws and vote on our vote on laws that govern the country. That's great. But even if they're not a spirit filled believer, even if they're, if, if they're just not going to inhibit. Yeah. Right. The, the houses of worship from singing yeah. like, like Gavin Newsom did, you know, yeah, during the pandemic, on, yeah. he's like, you can't even gather and you can't even sing. That's what happens when evil people or godless people are in power. So yeah, we need we need people that are that are not going to inhibit what God is doing or not going to inhibit things that uh, that have to do with our faith. Uh, but even better, you know, if they are spirit filled and they're yeah they're, they're writing from a place like our forefathers did, they were spirit filled and gave us the the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence. Come on, um, that's you know, even better. I really, I really. Everybody watching this, ask God for that encounter like David had. Ask him for yeah, that. Ask, ask the Lord, give me that sense. Let me let me experience your presence. Let yeah. me experience that Father's love. I, I don't care if you've been going to church all your life. Because, there's a, again, we're talking about preachers that are preaching deception, yeah. that are saying things of deception. And I sit there, and as as much as I love them, and as much as I've, I've you know, been impacted by them, but to see them peeling off and going to this different direction it breaks my heart and i can't stop but come to the real to to the conclusion that they haven't had that encounter yet otherwise that it because when i've encountered that love and that i can't just throw away life right. i can't just throw away god's decision of who i am as a gender i can't just dispose of that and say oh I get to make that choice. That's my then I'm then I'm truly playing God yeah. in that, yep. and and saying that he that he, he he makes mistakes or he hadn't gotten gotten it right. One of my new T-shirts says, uh, uh, "God chose my my skin color and my gender." And I'm not going to apologize it. for either. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> David Harris Jr. dot store. No, hey, and and seriously. David's written some incredible books. I he's, got one out right now. I'm working on the second one. I, uh, that's it. You're working yeah, on the yeah. second. I'm sorry. Yeah, he's got and and he's being prophetic. He's being prophetic. There you yeah. go. I'm yeah. releasing that. Hey, I receive it. I receive. And it. And the t-shirts. I have several of his t-shirts. My favorite is "Make the Rainbow Godly." Yeah, <laughs> it was dirty, so I didn't wear it today. I wouldn't wear it since it's. Well, I love month, that one but, too because uh, it it yeah. really ticked me off when. Fox took Tucker. Uh, I'm like, what in the world? Anyway, yep. but it, it 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 is so true that that man, we've got to we've got to take back and make you know the things that were that were righteous and godly. We've got to put that. And I, I remember I remember back when um, I'm I'm about to I'll be in Poland next month, and I remember when Trump was there and he was uh, speaking and he and he said something, and I sat there and I thought. Man, I don't know of another president that would do this. Yeah, but he got up and he he was praising the Polish people because they finally, you know, staring down communism, said we want God again. Mm -hmm. And I sat there and I was like, man, that's. Did it take having to go that low? Yeah. To to get Sometimes to that place, and I pray that we don't get any lower. Yeah. To get to that place, but this is where. You know, when the scripture says, when the enemy comes in like a flood, God will raise a standard. Yes. David, we are the standard yes. of God. You are. Yes, you are. You are the standard. The standard that God raises up to say no enough, mm -hmm. to stop. And I mean, if it hadn't been for the prophets speaking, having to go even to, even to a righteous king like David and saying, 
you you took a man's wife and you killed her husband, you know, you are the man. You know, even to have the guts, I mean, that prophet could have been killed. Thank God we, there was a king that had a fear of the Lord to not yeah. do that and yeah. to say, I am the man, I need to repent, yeah. you know? And and we, we're in a place where people need to speak up to the truth and, and do that and realize that is being loving and yeah. that is being kind and that is being godly. Yeah, it's, you not, know? it's not love to let somebody stay in deception or to let them think that they're that they're deceived viewpoint or idea of a matter, especially as a believer, is yeah. is okay with God because it'll it'll just it'll leak through them to other people, right? You people will people disseminate and, and share that information if they're sharing lies, then that's not that's not love to let people lie to other people. Yeah. No, it's so true. You know, as we close out this program, and you've been really gracious uh being here with us. It's been an honor, brother. Thank you for that. Um, would you just pray a release of that encounter that you had mm. for everybody watching? Yeah, absolutely. Um, because I just I just feel an anointing on that, and I know you're an anointed man, and I I I, I just really I feel that's something that you have to impart and to release. And and man, if you're watching this, just put your hands out. I don't care if you're on the treadmill or the stairmaster or whatever. Just yeah, pause on the pause. treadmill. Pause on the treadmill. <laughs> okay. Pop he's, off and pause. He's thinking ahead. I'm not. <laughs> And I was going to say just that, uh, pause where you're at, mm. close your eyes, because God is a spirit. You're not going to see anything in the natural. And I want you to just listen to my voice. I want you to, to just open your heart to the Father. Say yes to Jesus. Yes. Just say yes right now. Say yes, Jesus. Say, I want more of you. I want an encounter with you. And I want an encounter with the Father. As you sit there, right now or stand there with your hands open i'm just going to release that to you father the precious name of our son jesus your son jesus i just release an encounter of your presence right now an encounter with your presence with them give them a hunger father to hear you and holy spirit i ask you to just rest on them right now yes just rest on them just rest on them and fill them up. And if there's anything yes. that's in your heart, anything that you've done, anything that you know you've been battling with, I want you to just give it to God right now. Just see yourself reaching out, grab inside, reach, just see yourself reaching inside your heart. Just like put your hand to your chest, grab anything that's in there that you know that's in the way, grab it and then stretch your, your hand out and release it to God. Yes. Give it to the Father and ask the Father to just fill you up. Daddy, fill them up. Fill them with your presence. Give them the truth that whatever lies that have been, been there have been mm -hmm. keeping them from knowing the truth, that they are worthy because Jesus paid the ultimate price for them. Yes, Lord. That they are worthy, that they have worth, that they have value, that you haven't forgotten them, mm -hmm. that you see, you see them, you know right where they're at. You know everything that's going on in their life, and you have a plan. Yes. You have a plan for them. You have a plan for them. You have a hope for them. You have a future for them. Just reveal that to them right now. And then mm. I just ask for a hunger. Just just ask, say, say, Father, make me hungry. Jesus, make me hungry to know you and to see your plan for my life. Yes, Lord. And just say yes to an encounter. So, Father, I just say encounter after encounter for your son, your daughter that's watching this as they as they become intentional about seeking you, getting in a quiet place with you, maybe it's in their car when they're driving, instead of listening to the radio or something else, they're listening to worship and they're speaking to you, they're seeking you, they're asking you. God, as they begin to step towards you, Father, I pray you would just meet them mightily with an encounter of your presence. Reveal your heart to them. Yes. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Whew, that was good. <laughs> I feel that. Oh, David, how do people how do people follow you? How do I mean? I know you're on all the all the social media stuff. What what? How how to tell tell our David J uh, Harris Jr. on yeah. all my social media handles. Uh, my website's davidharrisjr.com uh, for um, speaking invitations or mm -hmm. anything else. And then my my website, my new website that I thought's kind of catchy. Instead of David Harris Jr. store, which will get you to where all my merch is at, is lovethatmerch.com. 
lovethatmerch.com. Yeah. I like that. Lovethatmerch.com is where I got all my uh, my stuff on there. And, and man, I think with a with a certain order amount, I think it's like 75 bucks, you know, you get my book for free. So Come on. Yeah. And let me tell you something. He's got some amazing T-shirts. He's got some amazing things that really, again, like like the Make the Rainbow Godly and many, many others yeah. uh, that I, I, I just love. Uh, but also he's got, God's dropped some things in this guy's uh, spirit that has been really, like even some supplemental stuff. I know I've been taking it before my workouts. I feel all this energy. I mean, and it's all natural. It's good stuff for yeah. you. Like it's, I mean, the Lord's really blessed you with some wisdom in that area. You know, and so go to that, visit that, and and that way you'll be supporting what David is doing as being a voice uh, for all of us for a righteous purpose and for a righteous standard. And so, anyway, go to that. Love you, man. Love you, brother. Always Thanks love for having being me. with you. Yeah. And as Good always, blessing. hey, we want you to get more radical. Yes. And so get out, be more radical, share the gospel, advance the kingdom. This is our time. This is the time for Christ to shine, and he's in you. Stay with us and and join us next time and continue to share this podcast wherever you can. This week's podcast is brought to you by Robbie Dawkins Ministries. Do you know someone who would be impacted by today's episode? Share it with them and let us know what they think. Subscribe or follow this podcast so you don't miss our next episode. You can also leave us a review, like, comment, and follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Until next time, stay radical.